What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jen and in today's video I'm going to take this really old chair and I'm going to completely transform it using chalk paint and a little bit of upholstery. Don't forget if you like furniture flipping, furniture refinishing, DIY, or even faux finishing to subscribe down below. I post every week and I'd love to have you here to join our furniture flipping adventures. This chair came from my grandparents and I inherited this many, many years ago. You can see she's a little wobbly. I am going to sand it down, but very light scuff. And I'm gonna just get started because it's about 3000 degrees out here right now. And I just can't be in the garage for any longer than is absolutely required. So let's just get right on into this. Before I can even think about starting the fun part of this furniture refinish, I have to remove the seat. Hey, where's your big long handled screwdriver? Uh, it's either in the drawer or it's in the um, tool caddy in the top. Do you want this drawer? Or in the bucket. That's the other possibility. These screws had been painted over when I coated this in brown, so it took a little extra oomph to get them out. Next thing I had to do was remove all the staples from the denim layer. TBH, I can't even believe this held together considering it was tacked in with office staples. Seven office staples. Ridiculous. These are gonna be tougher. When I first put this old upholstery on years ago, I actually used an appropriate stapler. It took a bit of finagling to remove all of these heavy duty staples. But you'll see in a few minutes that I shouldn't have even bothered. There were 20 heavy-duty staples, but something even more interesting happened. This article made in compliance with AG of the District of Columbia approved July 3rd, 1926. Wow. Kansas approved March 1923. Minnesota approved April 24th, 1929. New Jersey revised statutes 26, 10-6 to 18. LA Act 4671918. This is insane. This is the oldest chair ever. Yes. I can't believe I still have this. Right. I can't believe it made it. It's in pretty good shape in the grand scheme of the world. Yeah. The age. I know, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get on with this. I originally wanted to reuse this denim because it's still in okay shape, so I grabbed my safety goggles, staples, and my handheld stapler then got going. I lined up the already existing holes on the front and back edges and tacked the fabric into place. Now, at this point, I already noticed it pulling weird because it's stretchy denim, but as usual, I tried to keep going. I even got all the way to one of the corners and continued trying to make it work. So I flipped it over to inspect and, well, I hated it. 
In fact, I shut off the camera and went to test how the old fabric would work with the paint color. Considering I'm removing all these staples, I think you can guess how I felt. Twenty-four. I'm actually going to use the original, well, <laughs> the original fabric that I had recoated this in, which is this cute tropical-looking caning. Caning is all the rage right now, so if I can get it in the fabric, might as well. It's also already cut to size and kind of got my fold lines and everything for reupholstering, so I really feel like this is going to be the winner. The winner! Winner is! I got it lined up with the existing holes and did the same as I did with the denim, starting with the front and back edges. And let me just state here, I'm a painter, not an upholsterer. So if I'm doing this wrong, just know that this is DIY and what I did worked for what I needed for this project. same way I did the denim one, but I really don't want any obvious fold lines. I'm going to try real hard here. I continued around until it was complete. Then I grabbed my fabric scissors and cut away the excess fabric. With the seat done and out of the way, it was time to turn my attention to the nightmare that is this wobbly base. I grabbed my Type On 3 Ultimate Wood Glue and some heavy duty masking tape. I measured out the tape and got it ready to go. Gently separated the wood at the crack and squeezed in a generous blob of glue. With a small artist brush, I smooshed the glue into the entire opening realigned the parts, and clamped it using the tape. I cleaned up the squeeze out with a damp paper towel and left it to dry for a couple of hours. I gathered most of the supplies I'll need to finish this thing off and once the glue cured, I could assess the situation further. Thank you. Sure. Matt did have a wrench, and I used it to slowly release both bolts. With the bolts loose, I moved on to the screws, and well, that is painted in place. So I had to pivot. I grabbed my tight bond again and laid the chair down on a towel. I put glue in the leg, readjusted the seat base into place, added glue to the hole, and put the bolts and washers back. The wrench worked great and the bolts snugged up nice and tight. After cleaning up Squeeze Out, I turned it upright and set a box of books on top while the glue fully dries. I left it overnight. The next morning... I know it's gonna wobble. It's no better. Like, legitimately not even close to a little bit better. It wasn't perfect, but I'd come this far and wanted to finally get into the painting, so I scrubbed it down with a degreasing soap and wet rags.
wiped the piece down with some clean wet rags. And left it to dry. All right, then I grabbed my sanding sheet and 150 grit and my squishy sanding block. I gave the whole thing a light but toothy scuff sand with 150 grit wrapped around a squishy sanding block. I originally intended to take this back to the wood, but since she still has so many issues, I'm just not sure the time investment is really worth it, unfortunately. I gave the chair another scrub with some soapy water, wiped off the residue, and let the chair dry which took about as long as it took me to capture this footage of my nasty water. Finally, I could get to painting. I'm using folk art chalk style paint in the color Castle. I've used this color before on the nightstand furniture makeover from this same room. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it below and at the end of this video. Like usual, I'm spraying the piece, the paint, and my brush with water and giving everything a light but solid first coat. I came back about two hours later as per the folk art recommendations and gave everything a really solid second coat. I went a little heavier handed with the paint this time and thinned it out a little less, especially because I was painting inside the house, it really wasn't drying out as fast. And again, I left the piece to cure overnight. It'll be no surprise I'm using my very favorite Modern Masters Dead Flat Varnish to top coat this piece. I've mentioned it before, but I think it bears repeating. Never ever shake your top coat. Always stir. Shaking can introduce bubbles to the liquid and your final piece and ain't nobody got time for that. Full disclosure, I only gave this one coat due to the current state of the chair. And then this furniture makeover of a 100-year-old side chair was complete.
Despite the obvious issues that I can't seem to fix at the moment, I'm really happy with how this side chair turned out. I hope it lasts for at least another 10 years. But how do you think this came out? Leave me a comment below and let me know. Don't forget to subscribe before you go and turn on your notifications. Then please like the video if you enjoyed it. Likes, comments, shares, and subscribers really help my channel to grow and I appreciate it so very much. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks so much for watching. Later, peeps. This 40 plus year old chair. No, it's 100 years, almost 100 years. This chair was my grandparents, the other grandparents, then the, no. That's gonna, that better be in focus. You better be in focus.